the law in Massachusetts versus EPA, um, it's about global warming, right? Um, and basically, Massachusetts and a whole bunch of other states sue the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, because they don't think the agency is doing enough to combat global warming or climate change. So the question comes up, does Massachusetts have standing? Are they even properly here? Constitutional law is one of the first classes you take as a law student, and it can present some unique challenges because the Constitution is so indeterminate. I mean, what does equal protection of the laws mean? And the students are often frustrated at the beginning because there are a lot more questions than there are answers in constitutional law. And what I tell them, and I really believe this, is that it's a terrific training ground for young lawyers because in constitutional law, a great argument can really make a difference. All right, tell me, Massachusetts, why are you injured? I'm not gonna call on anybody. Somebody raise their hand. Why are you injured? What is your injury in fact, Massachusetts? Yes. As a owner of many of the lands on the coast, the increase in emissions has led to warmer temperatures, which has led to rising sea temperatures, damaging much of the property that Massachusetts owns on the coast. So part of your injury is that you own a lot of land on the beach. And if global warming continues to happen and carbon dioxide levels continue to rise, the sea levels will rise and you'll own less beach. I teach for selfish reasons and for selfless reasons. So I do really like the mentoring that comes with teaching. I like um, the personal interactions with the students and encouragement and inspiration. And I was the recipient of so much of that in my legal education and my undergrad education. And I value that even still today, I'm mentored by the senior members of this faculty to a tremendous degree. So I like being able to do that for other people. But I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I also like teaching because it enables me to forever be a student, and I really love that. I mean, I've always loved school, and I learn from my students, I learn from my colleagues, I learn from the guests that we bring in to talk about cutting edge issues. My life, my, my job is to just continue learning, and how great is that? <laughs> Tell me why they're not their injury is not caused. Even if you believe that they're losing land on the coast of Massachusetts, what's your next argument? Why isn't it caused by this EPA regulation? Yeah, Grant. They're trying to suggest that because the EPA doesn't regulate new cars, which would make up less than 4% of the American carbon dioxide production, which is only 20% of global carbon dioxide production contributing to global warming, but these thousand factors there, that is directly connected to the coastal lands being flooded. It simply doesn't make sense. And there's another immediate cause, land subsidence. I'm interested in the process of legal decision making and specifically in how that process is affected by changes in information and changes in technology. So recently I've been writing about how courts find facts and now we don't have to find facts on the record through a trial anymore. Judges can find facts um, on their own through Google and other things like that. And I've, I've, I've spent some time researching whether that's a good development and what the risks are and what the virtues are. Um, I think. Part of my challenge as a legal scholar writing in 2014 is going to be to address how the law is affected and will continue to be affected by this revolution in information technology. All right, guys, back to you. Can you explain to me why, how do you defeat this drop in the bucket argument? What do you say? Do you have anything? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Um, I believe Stephen says that agencies like legislatures, they never fix something in one fell swoop, so every incremental step, no matter how small, makes a difference. Returning to teach at William & Mary was like coming home. I mean, this is a institution that values teaching and lifelong learning and all of the things that I believe in. And so to teach law anywhere would be a privilege, but to teach law here at my alma mater is an honor that I, I can't even express how, how honored I am to do that. Even if forbidding new motor vehicles from, you know, pumping out carbon dioxide into the atmosphere isn't going to permanently solve global warming, it's going to do something. And, we're, you know, the, that's, an, that's enough. That's enough for redressability, at least with the special solicitude, right, which we're going to get to in a second.